Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. So we're back again with another build video. But these builds are going to be slightly shorter and slightly faster. So the next few are T3 and T4. Now T3 and T4 are very simple ships to build. As you can see, there is no rigging on a Merlin. So let's just look at it for the basics. This is exactly like a beginner ship. I'm not even going to talk about fittings on them. Uh, it may have seemed like an accident that I didn't really go through any of the fittings on any of the ships when it came to the beginner ships. But the thing about them is they have no rigs. So without rigs, their bonuses and their advantages are basically null and void. They have a small bonus and a small advantage in a direct combat, but other than that, they're totally weak. So two high and three lows means nothing. That means you can equip some rail guns on the ship, you can fire quite quickly, and you can maybe have a little bit tougher defense than your 1200. Your ship moves at, let's see, what is the speed? 363 meters per second, increased by your engineering skill, which most probably will be maxed out to expert. And everything, at, sorry, navigation skill, maxed out at expert. They give you a little bit of a firepower advantage uh, with speed. You have a little bit more than 1,251 uh, total defense. That's the thing, you, you have such a limited amount added. If you take a full hit from a ship when they catch you stationary or if they webify you enough, you're dead. There's no way for you to boost beyond um, the afterburners regulars. There's no way for you to achieve huge speeds which are beyond regular regulation. So you're not really getting those edges. For example, someone with a ship like the Cyclone, they can boost up past the 6700s because they can throw auxiliary thrusters on the ship and all of a sudden they're faster than a frigate with a battle cruiser. And that's you with this entry level, level 2 if you do use it. It is functional for some purposes in combat, but it is highly improbable to use the ship in most combat situations. That is one of the reasons why it's just going to be a quick mention instead of a full build. Now, I did say that I wasn't going to be doubling up and tripling up uh, builds, but this is a special situation. Okay, the next one in this class, the Castro. Yet again, another beginner ship. No additional slots for um, engineering. It has two weapons, two low and one mid. Now, with the mid comes the ability for you to interfere with another opponent's abilities over you. You can slow them down a little bit to reduce damage a little bit more. You can interfere with one or two settings. But nonetheless, this is still exactly where we started off. You have missile bonuses, you have frigate command bonuses, and you're still in that low class speed. Somebody could beat you with, as I said, a cyclone, a ferox, possibly even a prophecy but altogether you don't have that much of a fire uh, of a firepower advantage your ship is good for people to walk to you it's not good to lock on basically that's everything that there is to know about your ship that's the only thing that it's good for it's a good warp off point if you're going to use it um, sacrifice one of those points and that's what you can use it for in the game at the moment it's better to go with the absolute beginners. They may be slightly weaker, but they are absolutely inexpensive and they come fully rigged. And they are, as I said, inexpensive and fully rigged to start with. So you can just use the cheapest of the cheapest civilian equipment on these ships. They will get you to your start. You can always go T1, start up with that, gain some ISK, go up T2, gain some ISK, T3, gain some ISK, T4, gain, gain some ISK. T5, you'll start getting into larger amounts of uh, ISK. Then you hit T6, T7, you're gonna get massive amounts of ISK. You're gonna be able to run around in something like a cyclone. Then you're gonna get uh, T8, T9. You're gonna get Drakes, you're gonna get Nagas, you're gonna get Dominics, you're gonna get um, Ravens, you're gonna get Armageddons. All of these ships are all along that course. That's the way that you would go. That's the only reason to run with these. Now, this next one, the Condor 2, isn't like the others. This one is actually going to be a full bulb. I've decided to add it in here. Right, here we go. Two weapon slots, two mid slots, two lows, and a two by two on engineering. This ship compared to its original predecessor, the regular Condor, 
has a lot of an uh, um, a lot of an advantage. First of all, it has a 80% reduction on capacitor need from a stasis rebifier along with warp disruptor. That makes this here perfect for taking on ships that warp a lot and ships that are using micro warp drives. It is a good tackling ship because of that. Next thing we see that it has an after bonus level, 10% per level. Now, now when I say this here, it isn't, doesn't mean that things are totally broken to the point where they can't really be fixed. It means that this ship will get this massive amount of bonus, a 50% addition to its after burner velocity. So that is going to give you a nice uh, load of um, speed. These small ships have a lot less investment in terms of uh, SP points. So if you're going to invest in them right now at this late stage, you can use it for quick um, You can use it for a quick uh, combat situation and have some fun. That's about it. You can use it for PvP. In PvE, it will be a good climbing vessel. This ship will allow you to take on slightly higher level missions than you should be able to handle with it. You'll be able to handle T4, possibly T5 with this particular vessel. And with its bonuses, you won't be that badly affected by stasis rebifiers. A massive bonus from your afterburner will allow you to basically shake off most of the effect of a Weber fire, you'll still be moving pretty fast. Now it also has a missile bonus of 12% times it by 5 that gives you a total of 60% missile uh, damage bonus. This is a massive amount of uh, advantage. Next thing to look at is the overall defense. It's almost a 15,000 start off defense that's going to push it up to just past 2,000 with all your research added to this vessel and rigging up in those slots is quite frankly what's really going to push the ship as i said the ship is primarily something that you can use for a pvp situation but it is going to be really useful for you in pve as a tackle it is more or less better to be used in a group situation it can handle one or two shots from certain vessels looking at its speed as a counter 423 to start Against the other two who I said were practically useless, useless sorry, 423 has a massive advantage on something like a cyclone. It has about a 100 meters per second base increase against them. This here will allow your ship to move around really fast, really out of their league. It's going to be something that those big ships are going to struggle against. You're going to get massive amounts of velocity off this vessel at the higher stakes with the afterburner added you're going to pass the 1000 to 2000 mark quite easily you still have the ability to increase that speed even further to reduce damage or you can use other engineering rigs in comparison with this to give it a nice beefy hit when it comes to taking it on for assault okay it has a 31 megawatt uh, power grid this isn't such a big problem because most of its slots aren't going to really kill you in terms of usage right capacitor is 345 gigajoules not to worry about with your maximum uh, research and everything added these will be much more stable although they re they would only go up by a very small amount you're looking at about 450 as the maximum on this vessel it is still going to be quite useful it does have a big enough cargo capacity for you to use it for a prolonged period of time it also has a very small source radius meaning that locking onto you takes quite a bit of time you can warp away with this vessel most of the time obviously unless you're facing uh, frigate first frigate okay so let's get into the next section which is important for these bulls and that means we have to look at high stocks now this is a missile platform ship and with a 60% bonus plus your bonus from research this ship will be unbelievable i'm not even going to go with anything smaller than the regular missile system i'm not going to go with the torpedo so oh wait sorry this is the wrong one you're going to go type b because that is available now through reverse engineering it's a meta level 12 that is where we are in the game so look at it look at everything that's part of it what is its cost to grid? 8 megawatts. Two of them are 16. 16 out of 31. That means you are left with 15 megawatts on the vessel. 15 megawatts is still quite a lot for what is to come in the last two sections. Don't worry about what comes next. 
Okay, so 15 is left. We go into the mid sections. It's an electronic warfare bonus, and we're going to use as simple as it gets a stasis web of fire on the predator system. As you can see, one megawatt, nothing to scoff at. You can actually double that instead of putting in the warp disruptor. So yeah, that is your option. I would go with double stasis web of fire. Warp disruptor is an option. This is for tackling after, not after one, sorry, micro warp drive vessels. It's also a one megawatt device. Nothing really to be stressed about. If you're using it, those are the advantages you are applying in combat. I wouldn't suggest going with anything else. Your ship doesn't really need to be more stable than it is. It has almost an infinite amount of uh, cap. So you are really quite safe. Now you have two low slots. One of them is directly going to be put straight through to your afterburner. And here's its small afterburner max level. That's type B. This is going to be quite expensive in terms of your grid. As you can see, 16 megawatts. As I said, you don't really have to worry about everything. You only have 13 left from your engineering boost, but the counting out three megawatts of it isn't really going to kill you. You go up to the next thing which you need. This is where you really have to focus on that little bit right at the edge. You're going for a shield. Type C would have been better, to be honest, because it's slightly lower on power usage, but let's just look at the Type B. Six megawatts. As I said, you're around 40 megawatts on this vessel with the engineering added, quite a bit of extra. You know, you did already go three over and this here is nine. You're literally at the edge of maximum engineering. The ship is now fully fitted. It's capable of doing quite a bit. It's very hard hitting. It's got quite a boost to its recovery. You can recover 115 shield with each hit. So yeah, that's quite a good one. It has a four second activation rotation. It's only a 37 gigajoule activation. You can use this here for quite a bit on your ship. As I said, it's very, very stable. So using this in conjunction with your weapons, you should be able to eat away at uh, the ships in those missions quite easily. Your speed is quite something to uh, behold and your regeneration in terms of uh, power is quite uh, balanced. So you have a good scope up when you're regenerating power. Okay, the next thing that's going to be discussed is rigs. Now, because of the ship being small, its advantage is speed. The more speed you have, the less damage you can take. So the one thing I'm going to go for is straight saying engineering, double auxiliary thruster force. Now that may not seem like the best thing to do, but trust me, it is a very good way to go. Auxiliary thruster four is going to add an additional 25% bonus to your speed. You're already over 400. That means 100 is being added. There is a penalty for doubling them up. It is a minute penalty. So you're going to go up to about 600 as your base. Then you're going to be increasing through the afterburner and the afterburner is going to push up by another 200%. So 600, adding an additional 200% to it, you reaching almost 2000 meters per second on a regular cheap vessel. That gives you quite a bit of damage reduction. Anything that's hitting you is going to be really reduced. Now, the entire figure is counting in the effect of the afterburner 50% velocity increase. I'm not 100% sure if I'm correct. I said you're gonna be just near 2000. You could just pass 2000. Not 100% sure on that, to be honest. And with all of that, you have a nice entry-level ship that can help you gain back into the game. Now, as you saw, its price is really low. To build it up is a very low-cost uh, endeavor. It will take you less than a few million, maybe two to three million if you have the Iskwait. Uh, if you don't have the Iskwait, you can go around and scan for a few hours till you have the ability to purchase it. If you're going to produce it on your own, it's a very cheap ship to purchase, even without the efficiencies, sorry, in production. Okay, so that's it for this build. You've got three ships from me. Oh wait, I, I haven't yet given the, the weapons. So in terms of combat, since this is a missile platform, obviously we have that high power from a type B. You're going to go payload accelerator. And the second thing you're gonna do is you're going to increase the amount of firepower that you have. So a damage increase boost, all level four rigs, 
those are the real expensive parts to the shop. If you go for the maximum from the start, that's going to push your cost through the roof and your ship is really going to be powerful. I didn't uh, mention this, but you could always use your prototype um, rigs for the ship in the start. Use a double auxiliary thruster prototype rig. Uh, work up your ISK until you can afford something bigger. Obviously, I know on the real life server, the price of these rigs are through the roof. They're in the hundreds of millions a piece. So it might be best to just stick to an auxiliary thruster one and slowly upgrade as you earn more and more because it is a starter ship you can always jump back into it you can always run around and earn a little bit to start you up again when you have sorry when you have problems and hopefully that is a good enough piece of advice for you i hope that you all do enjoy yourselves and i will catch you all in the next one